Hi, Marco Pancho here. Let's do a little bit of kitchen science today. I just wanted to cook uh, this broccoli here to make uh, some broccoli soup. And then I discovered there was a little white fuzzy thing on the broccoli, which uh, could be a fungus or mold. Um, so what I did is, is I want to check this, uh, what it is, because uh, I have this basic principle. If there's any mold on any food, I'm just going to throw it away. I'm not even going to eat it. Um, and that's what I want to find out. Well, I first usually do a rough visual inspection um, of the object that I want to put under the microscope. In this case, uh, I'm using a handheld magnifying lens uh, to look at it uh, in close-up. I simply held my mobile phone camera in front of the lens. And uh, then uh, with a pair of tweezers, I'm carefully trying to extract uh, the fungus. And of course, uh, some broccoli uh, leaves also come along with it. Um, and uh, I try, now try to separate uh, the fungus uh, from the rest of the broccoli. Um, so a little bit of time lapse, I carefully uh, place the sample in a drop of water and I try to separate this. Of course, uh, the, the fungus, uh, the mycelium and the hefe of the funga, fun fungus is are a little bit uh, difficult to see now, um, but I simply remove the broccoli and in the water drop uh, there is now the fungus and I simply add another water drop so that I can put a cover glass um, on top of it uh, without uh, any problems. And then, of course, everything goes directly under the microscope. And uh, a first uh, rough visual inspection on the low power does indeed show that uh, there is a fungus present. So those string-like structures, I have to refocus a little bit, those uh, string-like structures, that's the fungus, okay, that's the mycelium. And uh, there is not a lot to see right now, but at a higher magnification, we can already start, start to see a, little, a few more details. And those round oval structures that you see, those are the so-called conidia of the fungus, and they produce the spores. And those spores, of course, are not healthy, especially if they're inhaled, uh, they can cause allergies and some other problems. And, but uh, at, uh, this uh, is now using the 10 times, and now this is a 20 times uh, magnifying objective. And now the conidia, those oval structures, they start to become more and more visible. And uh, those who basically are into the identification of fungi, uh, simply by looking at the, the structure and the shape of these conidia, you can already, well, not maybe not identify the fungus, but maybe this can already give you a kind of a hint uh, um, what the fungus could be. You can also see the individual cells um, of uh, the fungus, and you can also see, if you look carefully, uh, that they're branched, uh, okay? So they're, the mycelium of the fungus, the cells, they branch um, off. That's also a typical characteristic here that we're dealing um, with a mold. Yeah, and I'm uh, focusing back and forth. A, a totally different issue, maybe you can see in the background, there is, uh, when I move the slide, that there is some dust and dirt which remains stationary. Well, that is a, a sign that uh, I have to give my microscope uh, again a little bit of a cleaning uh, because there is uh, some dust uh, which collected on the light source. I usually am focusing back and forth uh, so that I can get different parts um, of uh, the fungus in, in focus. Yeah, and if you look very carefully, some of the cells, well, you see a round structure, almost a very transparent round structure inside some of the cells. And these round structures, well, that's the nucleus um, of, uh, of the fungus. And yeah, so we look at different um, objects, uh, not objects, at uh, different um, locations here. And I'm always focusing back and forth because this uh, makes the whole thing a little bit uh, more, uh, more visible, at least those parts that are beneath or below the plane of focus. Yeah, so that is basically a, a quite a, a good specimen, I think, in the sense that there, you can see that there is also a little bit of color present. Yeah, and this here now is, uh, shows the branching, um, and uh, it, can also show the, it also shows the individual cells um, yeah, of the fungus. Yeah, and here at the top, on the top right, that's again the conidia, and here now also on the top left, I wanted to say, and here now on the top right, um, that, that, that's the, these are the conidia, which now start uh, to, uh, to appear. And this is now in dark field, okay? Um, so uh, I am added the dark field patch stop, and this now makes uh, the fungus appear bright on dark background. The slightly higher magnification again, and you you can also see that there is a the fungus is a little bit pigmented, and that the conidia have a slightly yellowish, light brownish color. 
Yeah, so that is uh, basically also a quite a good uh, good specimen to look at on the dark field. However, um, at higher magnifications, I found out that the, the image quality breaks down a little bit uh, using dark field. Like here, for example, it's not quite as clear anymore. And yeah, so the dark field patch stop size has to be in agreement uh, with uh, the objective. And in this case. Uh, the size of the central dark field patch stop is a little bit too small, but these are technical details. Yeah, well, the broccoli does not <laughs> smell very attractive anymore either, so I think uh, the best place uh, for it is uh, in the compost. Uh, yeah, and by the way, if you're kind of wondering, uh, this is not a uh, plastic what people have thrown in there, it's a uh, biodegradable material. Now a couple of words about the eating of food uh, that has become moldy because essentially you don't know really what you're eating when you're eating a, a, a moldy uh, a moldy food because the fungus might produce certain toxins and uh, therefore um, it's not might not be quite healthy for you of course much depends on the amount that you eat it also depends to a certain extent you know, on the type of food because a certain mold uh, for example it grows on nuts and peanuts well that can be quite dangerous because they produce so-called aflatoxins and, and they are uh, actually causing cancer while molds and other uh, types of food are less uh, problematic as a matter of fact on cheeses for example as well that is actually one way where you actually a uh, mold becomes part of the food because uh, they, you deliberately grow the mold on the cheese but in this case you know actually know the species of mold so i just wanted to say um yeah generally i would advise be careful uh, with moldy food um, and uh, for today i'm just uh, going to say that's it i wish you all the best uh, happy microbe hunting um, and uh, bye bye and see you next time